Chapter 1. Statistics are an important part of our everyday life. Statistics and probability are two terms we've encountered one way or the other and have come to mean more to us than we care to admit. Statistics refer to the collection, organization, and analysis, interpretation, and presentation of data, while probability is the chance that an event will occur or the total number of possible times it can occur. Much of life is centered around statistics and probability if we paid enough attention. While they seem to have differing definitions, both rely on one another greatly. Statistics help to reduce the stress of so many tasks by providing ample data to tackle them with. Without data, probability would be an empty concept devoid of meaning. The point of statistics is to summarize large data sets, increase the efficiency with which decisions are made, fix recurring problems, curb crime, and catch those using statistics for ill purposes. The benefits of statistics are derived when the probability of each event is established. There are a few tools used to accomplish this, some of which are the mean, the median, the percentile, etc. These tools give an accurate answer to the questions bordering on the probability of events occurring. So, in truth, statistics exist so that probabilities can be accurately calculated. But it is worthy to note that statistics might not always be exact with these statistical tools. A lot of the facts are subjective to the context in which they are applied, the individual calculating and organizing them, and how the target market interprets them. So, whilst the point of statistics is to represent facts, it can be totally misused or misinterpreted. Probability can be misrepresented or misunderstood due to difference in human perception. Chapter 2 Statistics Might Not Be Telling You the Whole Truth The dependency of statistics on the human aspect of the equation might make it a bit flawed and rife with a lot of fancifully laid out pitfalls one of which is the user and just how they choose to use the data and, of course, how it is received. Probability, like any tool, is prone to errors during its usage, most of which comes from the user and not the tool itself. Simply because you've gotten a well-sorted stream of data with the appropriate statistics adequately represented doesn't mean the reality of it bears any correlation whatsoever. Data remains as numbers and nothing more. Sometimes the numbers fail to fully express the reality of the events they represent. An issue with statistics is that, though it appears to be indicative of truth, it might be hiding much more than you know. If you chose to employ the use of a statistical tool that acts with a broad stroke, like the mean, you'll surely brush over smaller details, but your data would be right, just not a complete picture of what's real. Truth and statistics are meant to be interdependent. That is, one should reflect the reality of the other. So if the numbers say a movie is highly recommended, it is because in truth a million people liked it in the last hour. Truth and probability are the same side of a coin as one helps to give a clearer picture of the other. This is the correlation that data collection and statistics actually create. So when you see a recommended spot for dinner or a movie, it mostly is dependent on real, true choices you've made in the past or by people close to you. Did you know? The point of statistics is to reduce the likelihood to be bamboozled or cheated, but strangely enough, statistics make it easier to lie instead. Chapter 3. Probabilities are more precise than we know. As discussed earlier, there are some areas where probability tends to drop the ball on precision of data represented by showing only a certain part of the picture instead of the whole. Having a larger size of data to evaluate actually results in a greater accuracy. To arrive at a more concrete and real view of the data, the law of large numbers insists that for you to ensure a more precise expected value, you need more numbers to work with. The average of a smaller data set is actually less accurate than that of a larger number. When searching for the best possible result, it is advisable to evaluate a large number of data instead of a limited amount. Quite a number of businesses apply this law. These are companies that rely heavily on probability, such as casinos, insurance firms, and lottery companies. They offer a vast range of opportunities for the customers to get a big paycheck, but in the end, they are the ones who profit. The profit here is the probability, the chance that the company makes such unwise decisions and still earns more. Insurance companies offer health insurance to millions of people. This would seem unwise since health issues were all too common. But in truth, out of the millions, only a few hundred cash in on the insurance and in the end, the company wins. This setup seems like a winning strategy and can lead to a false sense of continued success. This is because we confuse accuracy for precision. 
Precision is the quality of being exact, while accuracy is the quality of being correct. They seem to mean the same, but with probability, they aren't. Avoid getting trapped in the belief that if one method worked once, it'll always work no matter the conditions. With probability, however, accuracy relies on how close a measured value is to the true value, while precision is how close the measured values are to each other. This is why even with the correct statistics, the outcome can be wrong. The error isn't because the numbers were wrong, but because of the user once again. Probability doesn't make mistakes. People using statistics make mistakes. Charles Whelan So it is with statistics. No amount of fancy analysis can make up for fundamentally flawed data. Hence the expression, garbage in, garbage out. Charles Whelan Chapter 4 Data is an integral part of solving problems with probability. Data is a very important aspect of probability, as mentioned earlier, as it helps reduce the errors associated with probability. Without the full picture, there is a likelihood to be met with errors. It is impossible to adequately represent real events without the data to back them up. The amount of data you receive determines to a large extent the accuracy of your conclusions. There are a few errors that a lack of accurate data lead to, some of which are Selection bias. When groups are improperly picked for analysis with no kind of randomization that would increase inclusion of a variety. Publication bias. When the outcome of data analysis impacts the decision to publish it or not, because it might be favorable or otherwise. Recall bias. The need to recall or rescind previously published works because of a certain error or a flaw in the issue. Survivorship bias. This is a situation where only the data that meets a certain standard and the ones that fall short or were too high are ignored. But even with these errors in representing data, there is still no better way to correctly tell the future correctly without data. This means that statistics on the probability of the occurrence of real events are still the best way to represent them. If we wish to precisely predict the future, we must first have all the facts and data to support. Chapter 5 the role of probability in answering pressing questions. Probability can not only tell the truth about events, it can also be a tool to predict the future through inference. This means you can draw a straight line from a current event to one in the far future before it happens. Current happenings can be indications of a similar occurrence in the near future. If a stock performs well in the first quarter of the year, chances are it'll do so for the second and third quarter of the year. This inference isn't an exact science, but it proves a great level of correctness as well. The chances of a student scoring lower on an exam after acing previous tests is low. This probably is based solely on the data of the former events and how it is indicative of future events. Statistics can't, of course, prove anything with astute certainty, but with inference and derivation, it helps to give us an understanding of the most likely explanation. Even though, on some occasions, rare events occur that make probability and data look useless. Probabilities are mostly accurate and almost never vary, but rare occurrences happen outside the normal range of probability. Sometimes asking the right questions isn't enough. You must ask the right people the right questions. One way to source data from real people about reality is through polls and surveys. If you wish to gauge the mindset of a group, you can do so simply by asking them questions. But the accuracy of the result is dependent on the way the questions are framed or worded. The drawback with polls is that you will get different answers from the same question if you switched some words around. Chapter 6. Data and Probability Evaluation and the Methods Employed It is possible to lie or even relay the wrong message using the correct statistics, but it is most difficult to tell the truth without it. Statistics, data, probability are all finely placed pieces of a grand puzzle, created to solve pressing problems. The role of probability in our everyday life is to simplify the task of relaying the truth about events. But to execute these tools adequately, there are trusted methods used to evaluate the data correctly to avoid any inconsistencies. Moving forward from the basic tools such as mean, mode, and median, these methods are much more tailored to give the most accurate of results. Without the right approach, it is impossible to correctly represent statistics without any misgivings. This is known as treatment. A treatment in probability studies is the use of various methods of evaluation to determine the most favorable result from a distribution. First of which is a randomized controlled experiment. This involves arranging individuals into groups, the control group and the treatment group, 
Then, both groups are placed under similar conditions, but the treatment groups get a different type of treatment intermittently. Then, we have a natural experiment which involves no external influence from the researchers and the subjects of the experiment are observed outside the confines of manipulated factors and left to interact with natural factors instead. Thirdly, there is a non-equivalent control experiment which involves grouping into control and treatment groups but is highly biased towards the control group and favors the results from the group. Lastly is the difference in differences method, which involves comparing and contrasting two sample situations with similar conditions and picking out their differences and why it led to whatever results in each situation. If either cases were evaluated independently, you'd make a conclusion that might not hold true for others and vice versa. Conclusion Naked statistics is an avenue to relay useful info without the burden of extensive knowledge in the field of statistics. Charles Whelan took the monster head-on and spilled the beans on just what data is and the best way to look at it. Cheats have been twisting and manipulating the numbers for years because data is only useful if it is put into use, good or bad. Statistics provide a way to checkmate these disruptive behaviors wherever we are called upon. Statistics are an avenue to predict the future with great accuracy and is an accurate reflection of the present as well. When evaluating statistics, it is important to note that more accurate results are those that are drawn from a wider range of statistics. Any data gotten from a limited, controlled experiment will give a less precise result that fails to fully capture the truth of the event in question. With the result from the evaluation of these larger distribution of data, you can establish a baseline with which to create a conclusive opinion. For example, Netflix is able to suggest movies you've never seen to you because a large number of viewers think it was great, and most times, they usually are. Try this. Always take results from data evaluation with a grain of salt, knowing that it is quite easy for data to be manipulated to relay whatever image is desired.